Hello and welcome to Plant Breeding and Genomics Community of Practice webinar. The title of today's webinar is the introduction to the RR blood package for R for genome-wide genome selection. My name is Sean Yarns. I'm the content coordinator for PBG and your host today. For those of you who are unfamiliar with plant breeding and genomics community of practice, or PBG, I invite you to explore our training resources at www.extension.org slash plant underscore breeding underscore genomics. I also invite you to subscribe to the PBG newsletter and follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with PBG webinars and news. During today's webinar, Amy Jacobs Jacobson will per provide an introduction to the RR blood package in R and perform sample analyses using data from the Tritiaceae Coordinated Agriculture product. Today's presentation, as well as Amy's data set and the R program, are available at http colon slash slash pbgworks.org slash node slash 1440. The webinar recording will also be posted here within the week. Please welcome today's presenter, Amy Jacobson. Amy is a PhD student at the University of Minnesota, advised by Dr. Rex Bernardo. Amy received her bachelor's degree in plant science from Cornell University in 2011. She is currently researching improving accuracy of genomic selection in maize biparental population. I will turn things over to you now, Amy. All right, thank you, Sean. So, um, like Sean said, I am a uh, PhD student at University of Minnesota, and I will be talking today about um, the introduction to genomic selection are using the RR blood package. And we're going to start out here first with a poll of just to get um, an just to get an idea of what your experience is in using R. So if you could select one of the choices, whether it's your first time using R, um, if you use the basic uh, base commands in R, uh, written code in R, or are proficient in coding in R. Uh, just a little background about my experience in R. I took two undergraduate courses in R and um, learned basically the base commands and how to do some writing code in R. And then from there, I've just been looking online at sample code and um, trying to uh, use that sample code for my own um, work here. So looking at the results here, it seems that most people have either this is their first time using R or they've used basic commands in R. So um, just going through the webinar, I'll be sure to explain more about basic commands and how to uh, use those commands in RRBLUP. So going back to our learning objectives for today, uh, first I'll go through how to download the package and load the sample files. Uh, like Sean said, the sample, so the sample files are from the TCAP project and, uh, and are available online. I'll then go through imputing missing markers uh, using the a.mat command, uh, define the training and validation populations, and then finally run mixat-solve uh, to determine the accuracy of the predictions. So just a little overview of the ridge regression blood package. Um, the, for the package to work, you must be using our version 2.14.1 or greater, and I recommend using the latest version of the package, which is version 4, which came out in September. Um, in, for the code that I'm presenting today, you will be need, needing to use the version 4 package um, for the imputation and um, must be using the R version 2.14.1 or greater. Uh, this package uses ridge regression blood for genomic predictions and uses the mix.solve command to predict the marker effects. Uh, mix.solve does not allow for any NA or missing markers, so imputation is necessary in order to run the command. And it also, the package also allows you to define the training and validation populations for genome-wide selection. So just a quick overview of uh, genomic selection. There's either a one-step or a two-step process. I'll be using the two-step process. The two-step process uses the adjusted means calculated across locations, and then these means are then used for ridge regression blood, while the one-step process uh, uses the mixed model analysis for the plot data. 
So I'm using the two-step approach since the data set only has one location, so there really aren't means that need to be adjusted across locations, and this is also computationally more efficient and faster. So to install the package, especially for the people for the first time that, this, that they're using R, um, you have to launch R, go to the Packages menu, and then Install Package, and then select the CRAN mirror nearest you. A lot of locations will show up, so just select where, where you are. Then a list of packages that are available on CRAN will show up, and select RRBLUB, and then hit OK. Another way to install packages is to install them by a zip file. So, go, so if you go to the CRAN website for Bridge Regression Blub and then load the package by going to the Packages menu and then install packages from local zip file. Uh, and then just select wherever you've saved that zip file that you downloaded online and just hit open and that will load the package too. So now that the package is installed, the library must be loaded every time R is open. So to do that, it's just the library and then parentheses, whatever package you're using. So in this case, it's RRBLUB. And this is done every time that R is open, the library must be loaded. So just an overview of the sample files that I'm using. The files were downloaded from the Hordium toolbox from the uh, TCAP project. And this is a University of Minnesota barley breeding program preliminary yield trial um, from the St. Paul location in 2009. I selected three phenotypic traits to use. I selected yield, plant height, and heading date. Um, I selected these traits since they have a pretty high uh, heritability for plant height and heading date, and they were um, easy to measure, easy to be measured, and so all the um, all the individuals had these. Um, numbers and there were no missing values. Uh, the marker set was had 1,178 markers and 164 of those markers are NA and we'll go through with imputation what to do with these NA markers. The data set was also in the format that's needed for the RRBLUT package and this is that the markers must be in a negative one zero or one format. So the one is the SNP for the homozygous parent one zero is heterozygous and negative one is homozygous for homozygous SNP for parent two. So the sample files are available online and once you download those files uh, you can set the working directory in R using set WD and put in the local directory that these files are saved at. So you can see from the screenshot that my local directory was my computer, then documents, and then I had a webinar folder where these sample files were saved. And to load in the files, I used the read.table command. Since this was a text file, if I was using a CSV file, then I would use read.csv. And the header, there is a header in the marker file. There is not a header in the marker file, so I have header equal to false. And I then used the head command in order to see that the files were loaded correctly. So I did head markers, and this shows the first five lines of the file, and it also shows the column names. So I can see that a header was not put in since I had header equal to false, and I see that the data was loaded incorrectly, uh, that there isn't a header, and that the uh, sample file looks like it does in the text file. So this is always good to see to make sure that the files have been loaded incorrectly and that will help out later on um, make sure that we don't have any error messages. So to load in the phenotype files, the phenotype file has does have a header. So I have header equal to true. And for the phenotype files, there are three phenotypes of yield, plant height, and heading date. And using the head command, I can see that that file has also loaded incorrectly and that there is a header uh, with yield, height, and heading date. And all of these files must be in matrix format. So when I load it in, and in the code, it's as.matrix, and this uh, converts the files from a table to a matrix, which is necessary for the package. So to 
make, to also make sure that the sample files have been loaded incorrectly, we can determine the size of the matrices. So I, that's, I did that with the dim command. And to do dim markers, this shows 96 individuals, which is um, what was 96 observations that we had for the phenotypes in the markers, and then 1,178 markers. So this is 96 rows and 1,178 columns of the markers. And then for the phenotypes, it's again 96 individuals and three traits, so three columns for the traits. Okay, so then moving on to our next learning objective of imputing missing markers using the a.mat command.